Hi, this is Happy Bird from Happy Bird's Glitter Nest. .com. And today I'm going to show you how to make these lovely memory wire bracelets. This is a one loop memory wire bracelet, and they go on very easy, like so. And you can take them off easily, like this. So you can prepare these ahead of time for Christmas. And um, I think you're really going to like this video. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to put them together. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some memory wire. Now, I like using the Beadsmith silver plated memory wire and it says bracelet here in the corner and I use the two and a fourth inch diameter. Now this particular one had 12 loops on it. I have used some of it already and you can find this in gold plated as well. And the next thing you're going to need that's absolutely essential when making uh, memory wire bracelets are the memory wire cutters or the memory wire, wire shears. And the reason why you need these is because this is not like regular wire. This is tempered wire so it's meant to hold its shape and it's very very tough. So if you try using your nipper tool or your flush cutters, it will ruin them. And I know this to be a fact because many, many years ago, when I first started out jewelry making, um, I tried it and it ruined them first time. So it, this is really important. This is by Beadalon and you can pick these up at any craft store or online anywhere between nine and thirteen dollars but if you use um, your coupon like at Michaels or something like that you can get it for as much as half off. Now another um, tool that I love using it's not necessary but boy it sure makes life a whole lot easier are these Beadalon um, finishing pliers they're memory wire finishing pliers and you can pick these up anywhere between eight and eleven dollars now normally I would use my um, round nose pliers to finish off the ends making loops well the only thing about the round nose pliers is it does slip off the memory wire and it's a lot tougher to make that loop and you also have to be careful if to make um, uniform looking loops and it can be a little tough using using this but now we have this and as you can tell there's one right here that's smaller and one that's larger and it's just so much easier when making the loops and it doesn't slip so I'll show you um, a little more as I make the memory wire bracelets but I just wanted to give you that little bit of information first. So now we're going to cut our memory wire. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull out this end part right here. Okay? And then you're going to grab hold of the second loop right behind it. Okay? Now I have these these two pieces right here. So I'm going to put my hand right here in the front. We're going to pretend like all this back here is not even here. And we're just working with the front two pieces. Now we're going to use this piece here as a guide as to where to cut the second piece here. Okay? So what you're going to do is roughly cut here at about two and a half inches. So if I laid this um, measuring tape across here, I would want to cut the second piece at about two and a half inches. Now it doesn't have to be 100% spot on, just a fairly good rough estimate and just cut it like that. And see, now we have our, our bracelet um, frame. Okay, so now I'll be using the finishing pliers on this and I'm using the small peg and you want that whatever uh, peg you're using whether small or large you want it to be right here at the top so I'm just taking the very end part like this and I'm twisting it 
and I'm going to come back in again and continue twisting it. Now some people at this point like to leave this open and then put on the charms afterward, but I don't like doing this because I find it very difficult um, to do that um, after I bead the um, bracelet. So I just like to close it completely and then any charms I have I'll hook on here with um, a jump ring, a little four millimeter jump ring. So I'm just going to continue to close it like so. And there it is. And you want that loop of course to be on the outside. You don't want to put it on the inside otherwise your bracelet won't um, lie right on your hands or your wrist. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to bead and um, then we'll make this loop when we're finished. Okay, so I have my pattern laid out and it's best if you make patterns of uh, three, five, or seven with your beads because those are going to look uh, the prettiest and the most uniform on your bracelet. So just remember those odd numbers, sets of three, five, or seven, okay? So I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit and I wanted to show you, I chose six millimeter check glass beads, four millimeter crystal bicones, and four millimeter daisy spacers for this bracelet. And I love the check glass beads. They're a good alternative to crystal because they're not as expensive. I purchased this beautiful strand at Michael's and this is the red label so it's the cheapest. Um, a lot of times during Christmas they'll have beads as, um, up to 70% off which is nice and they'll do that off and on. And I'll show you some more check glass beads that I bought at Michael's and see all the color variations when you have that and you're making your bracelet it just turns out so pretty and I just love the sparkle and the shine and I'll show you some others this is kind of a vineyard or kind of a, a wine looking uh, group of beads here I thought these were pretty. I found these at Michael's as well. And then I have some beautiful check glass beads that I purchased on eBay. And I thought these were beautiful. I can give you the link on my blog at happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com Aren't those pretty? This is called Aqua Vitro. And I just thought they were just beautiful. They make lovely bracelets. Okay. And, okay, and so we're going to start. I'm going to place a little four millimeter bicone to start. You want to start with a bicone and end with a bicone. just to give it a little more of a uniform type look. These are fun bracelets. Some people wear these with the charms on their wrists. Some wear them with charms on the top of their wrists. I should have said the bottom of the wrist or the top of the wrist. Sorry about that. So I just keep stringing this is a lovely project to do for Christmas, make it up ahead of time for birthdays, any type of shower and you can adjust the beads according to the occasion as far as the color goes or the type charms that you use This is a wonderful beginner project for people who are just starting out doing jewelry making. There we go. And you can wear these as just a single bracelet or you can 
group them together on your wrist. If you want a little more of a layered bangle look, it's totally up to you. So as you can see, you just keep going and this is also a wonderful project to do while you're watching TV or listening to your favorite station, radio station. So I'm just going to keep going. And I'll show you just how pretty this looks. So far. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all that shine. Okay, and you just keep sliding it around like that. And then you just keep going. Now I can see I'll probably need more than I set out here. Um, so I'm just going to continue adding to this pattern and then I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to continue. Like so. And if you don't want to watch me finish this bracelet, you can always fast forward the video. I like to use a lot of different shades of blues and purples and greens in my bracelets. I mean it's fun to make Christmas colors as well with Christmas charms. Those turn out really cute if you want to make a fun bracelet. But for me personally, when I'm giving these out as gifts, or I should say when the ladies are choosing what bracelet they want um, as they come through the door, I like to keep in mind that if I make them with a Christmas theme, they'll probably only wear them for one day. Maybe next year, the following year, they might wear it for a month. But if you make bracelets that are non-Christmas themed for Christmas, chances are they'll wear them off and on during the year. So that's the reason why I make non-Christmas bracelets at Christmas, if that makes sense. Oh. I can hardly see the holes on that. I can I need new glasses. I know I've said that a million times, but I really do. Especially now. Okay, so we're getting almost towards the end and remember what I said, you started with a bicone, so you want to finish with a bicone. And if you have to trim a little amount off the end here with your memory wire cutters in order to achieve that, then that's fine. Okay, so I think I'm going to uh, just go ahead and slip a bicone on here at the end, like so, and at least it will have two bicones here at the very end, okay? So I'm going to hold this like this, make sure all the beads are pushed up against this loop here. And I'm going to hold it and take my finishing pliers. Now remember, I'm going to be using the small peg so that goes on the top. 
and I'm just going to roll it like so. And make sure it's closed. Yeah, it is. Okay. So now we can add our little charms here. Okay. So let's do that. And I'm using this cute little angel, this antique silver angel, and this little antique silver heart on this bracelet. And I'm going to use four millimeter jump rings, a couple of those, and they're strong gauge. They generally are when they're that small because people use these for chandelier earrings. And I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to slip this on the angel. And I think I'm going to put the angel here at the bottom. Hook that right on there. And then I'm going to close it. Make sure it's nice and closed. Okay, so we have that. And then over here on the other end, I'm going to slip on this little heart. Oop, upside down. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to slip this little heart on here. I love these little filigree hearts. I purchased those on eBay too. They have all kinds of colors. They have uh, bright silver, antique silver, bright gold, antique gold. I've seen them in bronze. I just typed in the word filigree heart charms and they just kind of popped up. So this is what we have, like so. And you can either wear them where the charms are hanging like this and just have this on the front or you can slide them around the charms to the front like so depends on your taste and what's nice is you can pull them off like that <laughs> alright so that's about it and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And let me know if you give this a try. It really is a lot of fun. You know, especially when you practice making these, you get a little faster as you go along. And um, I think you'll really enjoy this. So you have a wonderful and blessed day. And God bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye.